shocks, shocks, my boom shocks, shoot it up, my boom shocks, something, something, hey, 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 hey. Welcome back to our channel, YouTube. My name is Kristen Forgione. I'm the founder, creative director, and principal designer of The Lifestyle Co. And I'm Kylie Ray Seberg, the senior design director of The Lifestyle Co. And we are going to teach you how to cover those big ass walls in your house. <laughs> <laughs> we get asked all the time how you decide what to put where, how many gallery walls is too many, I'm out of ideas, what can I put on this huge 240 inch wall? I feel like we get that all the time. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a bunch of ideas for you so that if you have big ass walls or even small ass walls, um, you can use some of these ways, designer secrets, designer ways that we cover all of our big walls and the big houses, right? That's right. One of our favorite ways to fill wall space is with millwork, and that's gonna be items such as board and batten, shiplap, um, box molding, mm -hmm. any sort of extra detail and layer that adds to a wall, but also doesn't take away. So you can add those layers onto their wall, paint it white, and it's something that's not gonna scream in your face, but will add those layers in character. And be, be soft, mm -hmm. or if you do wanna paint your shiplap or your board and batten, it's gonna be really bold, a lot bolder than just painting your wall because there's that other layer in between. So millwork, shiplap, anything, any wood type of treatment, um, even fabric treatment, you could do that too. Any treatment on your walls is gonna be a fan favorite forever and definitely something endorsed by us. I'd say the next one that we use often is stone, tile, or brick. So brick, I mean, I would also say this is probably the most expensive option, <laughs> even more expensive than millwork. Maybe we should have started with the most expensive option. Right. <laughs> but um, anytime you put tile, stone, or brick on any surface, obviously there's gonna be a huge impact. Be very careful with your color selections on that because of such impact, right? Um, same thing with the millwork. If you're gonna paint it white, we have a great example in this project, actually our Mr. and Mrs. Smith project of brick that we laid and painted it white. And it kind of provides a subtle amount of texture, but it, you can still see all of that brick detail without it being overpowering. Um, we also have used stone like 15, 20 feet in the air. It's amazing. <laughs> um, also countertop materials, so slab. In our Go Big or Go Home project, we have, I think there's three or four slabs yeah, on, that, on that fireplace over mantle. It's incredible. So gonna be definitely your most expensive option, but it is an incredible way to make a space feel a lot more layered, mm -hmm. I would say. Another great option is wallpaper. You'll see this commonly used in so many of our projects. And it's a great way to add a subtle print or some texture. Mm -hmm. You can do that in a grass cloth material. Um, you'll see that we pick playful prints for kids' spaces, but you can also do wallpaper and make it feel super sophisticated mm -hmm. as well. Um, another option that's also great is a specialty paint finish. You're so it all over right now. Very, very, very on trend right now, but it has been around for thousands of years. Totally. Hundreds of thousands of years? I don't know. I don't know. Long time. Long, long time. Um, that would be Roman clay, plaster, lime wash. I actually just lime washed my own oh, your nursery. Oh, sa sad beige baby nursery? My sad beige baby nursery that I'm getting so much love on on TikTok. Yeah. Idiot. <laughs> but it's okay. But you can absolutely use it in kids' spaces, all the way up to powder rooms and formal yeah. spaces. And it translates really well. Another fan favorite, of course, and a favorite of ours, we both have them in our homes, and pretty much every single project is a gallery wall. There are a million different ways to do gallery wall. There's really no wrong way to do it, but the way that we do it most is symmetrical with um, square frames or rectangle frames, all the same type of frame, all the photos being edited in either black and white or the same filter or colorway, same, same type of editing, so you get some cohesion there. Um, we like our gallery walls matted, mm -hmm. if possible, or you can go super oversized. Like, I have a gallery set in my gym of four photos and the photos are 20 no 36 by 36 so they're huge and it's just my girls I took them on, on the grass and it's something that I love so much so gallery walls are always a good big larger way to cover a huge wall and I think there's a couple I'd say I'd say maybe a couple rules mm -hmm. you really can't have more than two in a space yeah any more than two even if the house is huge can feel a little redundant unless 
they're completely different. So I would say like that large format, like I was talking about, a 36 by 36, like more of a candid look, would be totally fine to have in one area. And then if you had another gallery wall, let's say 15 photos all kind of in the center of a wall would be fine. And then let's say you used a white frame someplace else, let's assume the other two were black in, an, in another area, I think you'd probably be okay. So maybe two to three, I would say. Mm -hmm. But like you can't have every single room having a gallery wall. You can't display everything you ever owned. We know you love them. Yeah, but. we know you love them, but you gotta tone it down a little bit. Um, we also have a course, Organic Desert Learning is my online learning platform. And we actually take you through exactly how we hang gallery walls. We include a buying guide so you can see all of our favorite frames. I show you how I edit photos for the gallery walls. I give you all of the resources to print. It's a really approachable course, super easy to understand. Every single student that has been through it, over a thousand, have has loved it and been able to execute their own gallery walls. So um, gallery walls forever. I feel like, I, I don't think they'll ever go to style. Um, and remember who endorsed ours from one of our projects? <gasps> Reese Witherspoon. Reese Witherspoon herself. Yep. She loved. If it's good enough for Reese, it's good enough yeah, for any of us. Yeah, and she loved right? um, Brie Bella's. Yes, yeah, it was Brie Bella's gallery wall. So little name dropping there. Hi Reese. Hi Brie. Yeah. <laughs> Don't. Now I'm gonna get the gigs. <sighs> okay. We'll come back to YouTube. It's all coming back to me now. <laughs> oh yeah, that line. <laughs> oh yeah, the line I've said fifty thousand times. <laughs> Another great option is large format art. You'll see us use this in so many different ways. Um, this could be framed art, this could be canvas art, this could be um, textural, textural art. art, any sort of different type of medium, and it's good to mix in throughout the entire home. Fiber art. Yes. Also fiber art. Yes, fiber art's a good one. Mm -hmm. But you can honestly not, I feel like you can't really overdo oversized art. Yeah, I agree. Because of what's on the actual art piece can change and make, yeah. Make or break the space so differently. And you know what else? Micro art. How can we forget micro art? <laughs> so we wrote yeah. down what we were gonna tell you, obviously, and we didn't write down micro art. Micro art, yes, micro we art. Have a micro art yeah, we have a micro art collection in the shop, and it's <laughs> beautiful. And micro art just indicates that the piece is small, right? So Kylie was talking about oversized art, large format art, ways to cover big walls. Interestingly, you can use micro art still on a larger wall. It's just obviously gonna be intentionally more minimal. It's gonna leave you a smaller footprint than a large format piece. We like them in pairs almost exclusively. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like micro art on its own can, can fall a little flat unless the wall is smaller, but typically like two pieces hung like this or like this or some footprint of, but our micro art collection is amazing. We use it in every single project, every honestly, single in some project. way. Yes. Um, but yeah, micro art too. Wheels are falling. The wheels are falling yeah, off, friends. It's <laughs> always the last video. Work. <laughs> <laughs> in our Always on Vacay Proj, we actually took a really oversized wall and we needed something to fill it with and we chose to do a custom vinyl. That one was kind of our known token saying of work hard and be nice to your brothers. And we had our local vinyl um, guy. Guy? <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> he's our, calling him the guy. He's but, our vinyl guy. Yeah, our vinyl guy come out. Um, we sent him the file and How he- How big was that wall? Gosh, it had to be like, yeah, it was big. That was a big wall. Yeah, so basically took it pretty much floor to ceiling and it just said, work hard, be nice to your brothers. It's also great because vinyl is easily removable. Mm -hmm. So if you get sick of it after a while, you can just peel it right off. We can add a new one. You could put a frame piece of art there or something else. Yeah. Um, but that's a good way to cover a wall. Yeah, and go watch that video. Always on Vacay Proj is another fan favorite of ours and that house is huge and there are huge walls in that house. So. Um, while we've been working in some of that project in this video, if you want to see the full house tour, that's a great place to see some more use of um, wall treatments. If you're looking for something that's not art related or um, you know, photography or lettering, as Kylie said, or whatever, objects are an incredible way to, one, bring a found piece, something that feels, it could be vintage, it could be new, but it, it tends to just feel found when it's an object, right? Um, we're talking hanging bells off of some sort of like hook, um, what else have we hung? I mean, you can also hang rugs, like yeah. rugs, tapestries are tapestries. Yes. Oh my God, <laughs> PV Vista build. That project, the tapestry, the vintage tapestry that was an heirloom piece from that family, it took up that entire wall. We hung it on a brass rug clip. Oh, it was amazing. It like just so made that space. So good. So tapestries. Um, another thing would be shelving. 
shelving, yeah. That's not built-in shelving, yeah. but like accent shelving. Yep. So we've done, you know, the um, from our Cool Shit project, mm -hmm. we had these humongous, oh. beautiful, yes. unlacquered brass shelves, um, hanging it from the ceiling, that covers mm -hmm. the wall space. Yeah. Um, and then that also candle sconces. Yep, candle sconces, they're yeah. so back. We sell this amazing sconce that's like super minimal. Mm -hmm. It's so, so gorgeous. We sell it in a single and a double. We'll link it in the description. Um, but yeah, any, any candle sconce situation is definitely coming back. I'd say we're seeing it and liking it more with a tapered candle versus a pillar candle, but you could put a, a pillar candle on it too. I'm thinking like what other objects other than bells? I feel like bells, yeah. um, we've hung spoons before, uh -huh. like spoons or like- um, Cutting boards. Yeah, cutting boards. Yeah. Just think of, if you could hang it and it could look cool, fur, we've hung furs before. Mm -hmm. um, Ropes. Ro yeah, uh -huh, yeah, rope. Yeah, so anything, try to think in a non-traditional way what you could hang and take up some space. And the way that you can create cohesion in hanging the objects is making sure that what you're hanging it with, hanging them with is the exact same. So while the links may be different, you wanna get a nice clean line with whatever hanging mechanism you're using, whether it's a, a nail or a hook or, or whatever, um, so that it helps unify how, di how different the objects might be. Get over it. I know, sorry. <laughs> Shut up, Lady Kai. Okay. <laughs> Lady Kai Another great way is not usually the most cost effective way, but one of our favorite ways to do is add focal lighting. So we get these long hallway runs, and you know, if we see the moment, like yeah. these need sconces going all the way down. Um, Use your lighting as art. Yes. Not cheap, but so impactful. Yeah. Are always on vacay project. I feel like that's probably one of the most recognizable moments in the entryway. We took these gorgeous, huge lantern sconces and just made this big installation on top of stone. So two wall treatments we've mentioned already. And it is just like so beautiful. And uh, again, looks like artwork. Um, and it's kind of like the jewels of the home, I'd say. Yeah, I think so too. And and pays off, like we said, it's an investment, obviously permanent, like mm -hmm. you're not gonna be taking these down and like switching them out, usually if you're using it as art, um, or if you do an installation, like the, the installation is scaled for the exact fixture. So we could definitely not remove those and put some other fixture up. No. Um, <laughs> but those are some of our favorite ways to tame those big ass walls that you have. I hope we gave you some ideas that you hadn't thought of on your own. If you want to go see more of our work, how we tame our big ass walls in our designs. Um, many of our most notable projects are here on YouTube. So go back to our channel, look through all of our house tours, and you might catch something you've never seen before. But we're excited to have you here. Make sure you talk to us, like, and subscribe. If you'd like to follow me on Instagram or TikTok, I'm adding TikTok now. Oh my God. Um, my handle is at Kristen Forgione. For Kylie is at Miss Kylie Ray. I was going to kept going. Yeah. She, can talk, she can speak for herself. It's at Miss Kylie Ray. She's a good follow. Um, and then our brand page, of course, is at The Lifestyle Co. We'll link everything we can in the description and we'll catch you on the next one.